So multifocal lenses, premium lenses, bifocal lenses, essentially clever lenses. This is a vast majority of my work. I have a postgraduate diploma in cataract and refractive surgery, so I deal with this all the time. I'm specifically trained for it. In general ophthalmologists, they go through their ophthalmology training and then they become a consultant and often they do some of this work, but I do believe that it's an art form and it's something which you need to be specifically trained for. And that's why I went actively and did a postgraduate diploma in it to make sure that I was up to date, to make sure I was giving the very best for my patient. I do a lot of medical legal work as well because I have a master's in medical law. And a lot of that work is related to problems with these premium lenses and whether to use them, whether they were put into the right patient and problems that can occur afterwards. Nothing is without risk and frankly, in, as with the whole of life, the cleverer we get, the more likely we are to run into problems. But if we pick the appropriate patient for these lenses and if we work together to give the optimal outcome with realistic expectations, then they work very well. My lenses have stood the test of time, and I always believe that I wouldn't put a lens into a patient's eye if I wasn't prepared to have it myself. So all of the lenses I use, I would be prepared to have it myself. Obviously, I'm far too, too young to need it now, but if I do, then I would do. It's not just old people who come and see me about this. Often, younger patients who are in their 40s just don't want to wear reading spectacles, and so they come and see me and say, can you A, get rid of my long and short-sightedness, but B, give me some spectacle independence. And I tell them we can't do things as well as nature does. Nature kept you going for 30, 40 years with an elastic lens inside the eye that changed shape to give you different focal distances. So when you were looking in the distance, the lens was a specific shape. When you looked close up, the lens got fatter and so you could see close up. That is the holy grail of technology we're working towards and we have not achieved that yet. So every lens we use is a compromised lens. Be slightly cautious about the premium lens word. Often people describe these lenses as premium lenses, and it tends to give the impression that these are much better than other lenses. They're not much better, they just give you more scope. They're not available on the NHS because they're expensive lenses, and they are required to, there's a, a, a nuance to it and a science to using them. You've got to pick the right patient, there are clever techniques you have to use, and you've also got to monitor and manage patients' astigmatism and expectations. Astigmatism is about the rugby shape of the cornea and I'll be explaining that a bit more in a few moments. So what sort of lenses have I got out there and what do they give? The aim is to give some degree of spectacle independence. So my aim is to achieve spectacle independence 80% of the time for 80% of the circumstances you're in. So that means that occasionally you will have to wear reading spectacles. If you're gonna read War and Peace, then you may need reading spectacles for it. Light is also your best friend and all of the the solutions that I have for you are light dependent. We have light energy. Light energy is what we see. The light energy is transmitted to the retina, the retina picks it up, and that's what you see because it transmits it to the brain. Some of the lenses I use split that light energy off, and you have to rob Peter to pay Paul. So if I'm using light energy and splitting it off between different distances, then that has implications for your vision. It means that in dim conditions you may struggle a little bit more, but often that trade-off is acceptable to patients, and it's really important that we talk about that, that we face it head on and that you realize that's the case. But the great majority of patients who have these lenses in are perfectly happy with it. There are lots of different solutions we can use. A trifocal lens designed to give you distance, intermediate, and near vision. We can put that in alone, or we can put it in in a duet formulation whereby we put two lenses into the eye. Again, it all depends on which patient you are, what you do for a living, your hobbies, all sorts of stuff like that, and that's important stuff that we need to go through. There are downsides because we split light energy off, reduce light intensity, we actually lose some degree of the light energy. If you remember from your physics days, many moons ago probably, if you have a wave and then another wave next to it, they can cancel each other out. So these clever lenses can lose about 10% of the light energy. That's energy that's lost and not utilized, and that's something which is important to bear in mind. We say we have a one in a hundred chance of taking out these lenses if they don't suit you. Thankfully, I've only had to do it once, but these things can, can occur, it's important you know that. There are bifocal lenses there to give you distance and intermediate vision. There are extended depth of focus lenses, again, to give you distance and intermediate vision. And there's the new IC8 lens that gives you a pinhole vision as well. All of these, are used for the appropriate patients. It's really important that we discuss options. It's really important that we discuss what's available and we're, it's really important that we discuss what's good for you. There are some tips that I give people with regards to the premium lenses and how to adapt to them. One, 
take, it takes time. Your brain has to adapt to it. Don't worry about it. Don't focus on it. Don't fixate on it. And actually, if you're the sort of person who does fixate on things, these lenses are probably not for you. You have to be chilled. You've got to accept that this will take time and your brain will take time to, to adapt to it. Glare is almost universal with these clever lenses. Some lenses get less glare, some lenses get more glare. But the glare is physiological glare, so your brain can filter it out, just give it a chance. Often the vision in one eye is a bit different to the other eye, and that's on purpose because we're trying to get different depth of focus to give you quality binocular vision. And it's really important that you remember that this is about binocular vision. I want you out there using both eyes. You won't be walking around with one eye closed. If you do check your vision one eye at a time on a regular basis, your brain will struggle because it gets slightly different images and you'll slow things down. So patience is really important. This is never 100%. It will get you close to 100% and my aim is to get you a better visual quality of life and make you happy. But there are some people who do struggle and it's really important to know that. If you're after perfection, then sadly we can't achieve perfection. This is compromise, but it's a great compromise. We have a few downsides with regards to reduced contrast sensitivity, a bit of glare, but the upsides are quite significant. We improve quality of life and I don't put these lenses into patients unless I think they're absolutely perfect. But if patients have a lot of astigmatism, that's something we can deal with as well. Astigmatism is the rugby ball shape of the cornea. So on your spectacle prescription, the first number is whether you're long or short-sighted. Plus is long-sighted, minus is short-sighted. The second number is the amount of astigmatism which you have. If you have more than one of astigmatism, then actually an ordinary lens which you have on the NHS would still leave you blurry after the operation without spectacles. But I have the opportunity of taking the curvature of the cornea, the clear window at the front of the eye, and putting it into the lens itself inside the eye. That means that I can get you reasonably spectacle independent for distance. Those are called toric lenses and something that I do very frequently. And the image quality is significantly better with those toric lenses. And so it's something that I'm very keen to push forward with in people with appropriate amounts of astigmatism. There are all sorts of options out there. The premium lenses doesn't mean that it's better than anything else, but it gives you greater scope. It gives you greater abilities and visual abilities and improves quality of life. The plus sides tend to outweigh the downsides, but it's vital that when we go into these things, you go into it with open eyes, if you excuse the pun. It's really important that we discuss things together. You know the pluses, you know the minuses, and then we undertake this journey together.